interesting conversation he had with Eddie Marlin, and we've got it on tape. Let's take a listen to it. Dutch, I just wanted to get with you this morning and talk to you. I've had phone calls, after phone calls, thousands of letters. They want to know what had happened to Dutch Mantell and Bill Dundee. Of course, I've seen and most of the fans have seen the fight that y'all had on TV. But y'all were such close buddies. Every time Bill Dundee would go to the ring, you would stand at the dressing room door. The minute he got in trouble, you hit the ring. Dundee watched your back. Everywhere you seen one, you seen the other. And something had to happen to bring that fight on. And we'd just mm -hmm. like to get to the bare facts and nobody but Dutch Mantell can really tell us exactly what happened. Well, let me, let me say this. You want to hear the story? I sure It's do. a deep-rooted story, and it goes back, it goes back years and years and years. Let me take well, this. Well, here, just probably. take this. And I want you to listen, Eddie, and I hope it, the fans can understand. I was here for a long, long time, and so was Bill Dundee. And uh, I knew him here. And then, uh, as you have to do in a wrestling profession, you have to move around. So Bill Dundee, he went to Louisiana, and I went to Florida. And uh, when I was in Florida, you know, then I had an opportunity to go down to, to Louisiana, and uh, that's where Bill was. So when I went down there, it's only a natural occurrence that since I'd, I'd known him here, you know, we were big buddies there. He was glad to see me. I was glad to see him. And we began to uh, sort of team up together and ride, make uh, wrestling matches in different parts of the country together and fly and everything. And where you saw Bill, you saw me, because we were friends. And we'd ride them down the road, and I'd take my guitar, and I'd play, and boy, me and Bill, we would sing and all this stuff. We had, to me, I thought we had a good thing going. And uh, I would chew, sit over there and chew my tobacco and I'd tell jokes and just, you know, basically just have a good time. And we'd listen to country music on the way up there and on the way back and wherever, and, you know, and we'd get to hit to the airports. We'd go to the bar and get around and stuff. So the time the flight would leave. So finally, Bill, his, his contract was up down there. And he said, I want to go back. I want to go back home. So his contract was up. So Bill left. And after about a month, you know, I sort of like wanted to go back too. So it took me another couple of weeks. Bill got back here before I did. And uh, took me a little longer because I had three or four weeks of obligations and commitments that I was obligated to that I had to make. <clears throat> so I did that and I came back in here. And everything was just like it was when it was, we was in Louisiana. You know, we would still make trips together and still play country music and still have a good time, you know. And it is true that when Bill got in trouble, I helped him out. Because when I'm friends with somebody, you know, I like to, I'll say I'll stay true to him. And then uh, this blonde-headed guy named Buddy Landell showed up. Now, let me tell you one thing, Eddie. I don't know if you know this or not. Let me tell you people about Bill Dundee. Bill Dundee is like a chameleon. Is that the word? Yeah. You know, it's like if it's a little lizard-looking thing. When it gets on a green thing, it turns green. Or if it gets on something black, it'll turn black. It just blends in. Now, Bill Dundee has a, a characteristic about him that when he gets around somebody, he sort of tries to adopt their characteristics and their personality. When he was a me, he liked country music. And he chewed more tobacco. He was always bumming me for tobacco. I'd get in the car, and Bill would say, Dutch, did you bring the tobacco? And i said, say, yeah, Bill, I brought the tobacco. But it wasn't no big thing, because he was a friend of mine. You know, I just, I accepted him for what he was. And Buddy Landell got here, and all of a sudden, I noticed this big, big change in Dundee. And all of a sudden, he was, uh, he was assuming the, uh, the characteristics of a nature boy, Buddy Landell. See, when me and Bill were together before, before Landell, we would go to places that had low ceilings, right, smoky, and we drink Jack Daniels, right? But when Landell got here, he wanted to go places with high ceilings and chandeliers where they drink wine and talk about the Zodiac and play backgammon in the back. See, I just don't fit in a place like that. And uh, uh, Landell, obviously, he's got into Dundee's ear, and, uh, you know, I heard him say, you know, that I was a redneck and I was a hillbilly and that I cramped his style. And pretty soon, Dundee was agreeing with him that I'd cramp Dundee's style. Now, to me, that just ain't right. I didn't cramp his style before. We pulled up to a restaurant one day, and he was going in, I, you know, and Landell turned back to me, and he said, Dutch, why don't you stay in the car, because you look like a bum. Well, to me, I didn't look like a bum in Louisiana. I looked the same. I looked down. You know, I like to wear jeans. Landell, he likes to wear $500 suits, which is fine with me. I don't care. Next thing I know, Dun uh, Dundee's showing up in a tuxedo, and he's walking around. But let me tell you one thing. See, what happened is I didn't stop liking them. They stopped liking me, which is fine with me. 
because I'm my own man. Lance Russell said it before that I'm a loner. Yeah, I am a loner. I like to do things my way. And if somebody else wants to do things their way, hey, that's fine. But don't knock me for the way I want to do things. You understand what I'm talking about? It's not hard to understand. It's not hard. It's not hard to understand at all. But let me tell you one thing, people, about Dundee and Landell. I can whoop Bill Dundee, and I can whoop Buddy Landell. Together, or head up, because I ain't backing down from nobody, and I ain't backing down from them. So if you want to know the reason, what happened? That's the reason. They stopped liking me. I didn't stop liking them. When they call me a redneck and hillbilly, hey, that's fine. But when you say something, Eddie, you got to be able to back it up. you got to have enough weight in that rear end to back up what you say. That's right, Dutch. Well, Dutch, we appreciate you explaining it to us. I understand it, and I think the fans out there understand it. And by the way, you said you carried your guitar on the trips with you? Now, I like country music, and everybody out there knows I chew tobacco. And if you'll carry that guitar... That sure have. If you'll carry that guitar with you, you can ride up and down the road with me. Would you listen to me? Sure. Okay. You want me to play you? I got my guitar right here. Sure, man. You want to hear something? I love it. Hang on. All right, golly. We'll play this song. What you want to hear, Ed? Anything you'll play me. What you want to hear? Just something country. How much you think this guitar cost me? I ain't no tell. I can't tell you. It's a secret, man. <laughs> what you want to hear? What, a little wildwood flower? That's fine. Mm -hmm. 